Hey guys, Will here, and welcome to my brand new channel. I can't wait to get things started, so let's kick off with a- Whoa, 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 whoa. Aw, come on, I just paid off those electrical bills. <laughs> wait a second, you're not the tax collector? Ow! Ah, my only face. What the? Luigi's Mansion? You want me to review Luigi's Mansion for the channel? Oh, but I was gonna kick off with a Sonic video. Okay, okay, fine, 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 fine. I'll, I'll, I'll do Luigi's Mansion. <sighs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Luigi's Mansion is gonna be the first game I review for this channel. <sighs> I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Oh. Okay, straight up, I do love this game. Despite taking place in a creepy, old, haunted mansion, the title is loaded with charm. Luigi is arguably in his best form to date, and you get to be a totally authentic knockoff Ghostbuster. But after 15 whole years, what is it that keeps Luigi's Mansion so awesome to this day? Let's dive right in to find out. Number 5, The Concept. Credit where credit is due, ladies and gentlemen. This was a huge risk for Nintendo to take for a launch title on the GameCube. Hell, it was a risk even not as a launch title. To have a game star the player 2 of Mario titles? Something that's such a far cry from what we're usually used to seeing in a Mario game? You're not hijacking castles to save the princess or even stomping on the occasional Goomba here or there. For goodness sakes, you're ghost hunting. And yet, it's never felt so satisfying. The story, in fact, is pretty straightforward. The game kicks off with Luigi traversing the gloomiest of forests with a mysterious mansion at the end of the trail. Instead of listening to common sense and running in the opposite direction, Luigi heads straight in and is immediately ambushed by a gang of ghouls. Rescued by eccentric scientist Professor E. Gad, who speaks in a unique form of gibberish, Luigi learns that the mansion is indeed riddled with ghosts, and that his brother is most likely being held captive within. Turns out, the Boos want to spotlight a Nintendo title too for once, and uh, oh, not now, Boo! And to exact their revenge, they've kidnapped Mario and trapped him in a painting for maximum irony. Your job? Be the ultimate house cleaner to rid the mansion of ghosts using EGAD's trusty and ridiculously awesome Poltergust 3000, rescue your brother, and save the day in a single night. Again, super straightforward concept, but as the saying goes, sometimes the simplest idea is the best one. It's all in the details, all in the execution, and the team behind Luigi's Mansion handles both perfectly, which is extremely important for a launch title with such a high risk as this one. That being said, let's go into further depth on some of those details, shall we? Number 4. The Mansion. No joke, this place is alive. And incredibly well designed. Seriously, I need to find this home designer for my imaginary mansion that I'll never own one day. The entire game takes place in the mansion that sprouted out of nowhere one night, and it's amazing how exploring it never gets old. Actually, what's even more amazing is how well the graphics have held up for a 2001 title. Must be the GameCube's shiny finish to everything, but I digress. On your first time playing, the mansion can feel more like a labyrinth with twists and turns and never knowing where the next corner or room might take you. Unlike the rest of the Mario series, you don't have your traditional, or predictable, forest, desert, ice, lava levels, lather, rinse, repeat, to traverse. Instead, you have a mansion that really feels like at one point it was lived in, and honestly, that's what makes traveling in it so cool and fresh every step of the way. But the real quality to the mansion shines with each individual room you stumble across on your journey to capture all the ghosts in the house. Nearly every room defines the specter who resides in it, from Biff Atlas and his do-it-yourself gym setup, to Shivers the butler and his small hideaway behind the laundry room. Not to mention the hidden rooms in the mansion that give it that extra sense of eeriness. It's all here, and makes the mansion a thrill to explore. And you know what? Speaking of ghosts, I think it's time we got into what this game is really all about. Number 3, The Ghosts. Folks, these may be some of my all-time favorite one-off characters in any given game. Now, you've got your average everyday run-of-the-mill orange ghosts, pink ghosts, red and white ghosts throughout the adventure, who are essentially the Goombas, Koopa Troopas, and Shy Guys of Luigi's Mansion. Actually, oh god, there are ghost Shy Guys in this game. Is this where they go after you stomp them in Mario games? Such a cruel world. But where the ghosts really shine are when we tackle what Professor E. Gad dubs his portrait ghosts. Ghosts of people, or dogs, who were alive at some point, but became ghosts after death and eventually Egad's personal decorations after he captured them in his younger days. Which is sort of creepy when you think about it, but uh, hey, live and let live, right? Uh, so to speak. Each portrait ghost is brimming with personality, from Melody and her hostile music sheets to Vincent Van Gogh and his works of afterlife. 
Each one is wonderfully written and feel truly alive. Er, ugh, no pun intended. Capturing all the mandatory portrait ghosts in a section of the mansion will grant you access to facing the boss of that area, who also happens to be a part of EGAD's collection. There are four bosses in total. Chauncey, the highly cranky demon baby. Bogmire, the silent specter. Bulosis, a gigantic ghost comprised of 15 boos. <laughs> Boo, would you please stop interrupting me when I'm trying to review your game? Ah, uh, let's save the final boss for last. In addition to capturing all of the mandatory portrait ghosts in the game, Luigi must also hunt down the 50 boos who play one of the most tedious games of hide and go seek throughout the mansion. After you've caught all the ghosts or a portrait ghost in a given room, the room is lit and that's your chance to find the boo and suck them up. Once Luigi's captured the minimum threshold of 40 of the Relentless Rascals, you- Oh, for the love of- That's not great. Uh, let's wrap this before hell opens up and swallows me whole, shall we? Luigi goes head to head to head against the head honcho himself, King Boo, who has somehow managed to take control of the Koopa King himself, Bowser. Without going too far into details, the final boss of the game provides a satisfying fight and a great conclusion to the story. By reversing the process of turning a ghost into a portrait, it's Luigi who saved the day for the first time and is rewarded with his very own mansion. If he collects enough money throughout his venture. The more money, the bigger the mansion. Even though his brother already has a land, a world, a galaxy, and another galaxy that I guess he's just not willing to share. And most importantly, Egad's ghosts are back safe and sound where they belong. His wall. Man, Han Solo's got nothing on these guys. Number 2. The Controls Ladies and gentlemen, even I'm having a bit of trouble believing I'm ranking this higher than the ghosts, but hear me out. It's the controls themselves that actually make capturing the ghosts so satisfying in the first place, that truly complete the ghost-busting experience. Sure, capturing the ghosts is exhilarating on its own, but the one thing I'll always remember about this game is how it feels to capture each one. To briefly describe the controls, once you begin to suck up a ghost after stunning it with your flashlight, you hold down the R trigger to whip out the Poltergust 3000 and pull back in the opposite direction of where the ghosts are trying to break off in order to bring them down. Some are relentlessly more difficult than others, looking at you, Sir Weston, and refuse to go down without a good fight. There is nothing more satisfying than sucking up a ghost in a single shot, and doing so will earn you the ghost's portrait in a gold frame. You can also get yourself a silver or a bronze frame depending on your performance, and though it doesn't affect your overall game, they do make for some pretty cool looking bragging rights. But what really completes this experience is the vibrations from the controller itself. The better the pull you've got on the ghost, the more the controller vibrates, and it almost feels as if you're controlling the Poltergust 3000 in person as you drag in your prey. Again folks, I know this may seem odd to some, especially ranking it so high on the top 5 list, but if I'm gonna be straight up with you, this is one of my most favorite aspects of the game that makes it feel so wholesome, complete, and downright memorable. Number 1. Luigi himself you got that right folks, in a game so solitary as this one, a strong main character to hold it all together is everything. And it's not like we've got a link or a quote where the character intentionally lacks a definitive personality so that the player can impose their own form of personification on them and almost become the character in a way. Instead, in Luigi's Mansion, you feel as if you're with Luigi on this adventure and empathize with him in every situation, whenever he gets terrified, spooked, or feel just as accomplished as he does when you succeed in a catch. Like I said at the beginning of this review, Luigi has never been in better form, and in my opinion, that still holds true to this day. The way he hums the theme song to himself when he's scared, or whistles it confidently when he's got the all clear, or the concern in his voice when he calls out for his brother. It all adds up to one heck of a relatable character who you're only more than happy to join up with on this adventure. I know it's not much, but in my heart, Luigi will always be number one, which is why everyone's favorite player too gets the number one spot on this top five review list. <laughs> see what I did there? All in all, Luigi's Mansion is a great game, and to this day, I'm incredibly grateful to Nintendo for taking a huge risk on their launch title for the GameCube back in 2001. It was a shame that it took 12 years for them to recognize a sequel for the green machine to star in once again. But you know what? Better late than never in my books, and Dark Moon, though not as epic the adventure as its predecessor in my humble opinion, provided for a great experience all the same. I doubt we'll ever see another Luigi's Mansion title in Nintendo's future for the next while, if ever, but if they ever do decide to make an HD version of the first game, I'd be all for it.
And that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you stick around for more content coming up very soon. The, oh, I just took care of that. <laughs> oh, seriously, what is it when you booze and throwing things? You have no physical properties. What the? <laughs> Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I. Oh, I. I, I can't review this. I, I. I don't have a 3DS capture card. No, I. I wouldn't be able to do to, to do the review justice. You can't haunt me for something I'm physically unable to do. I'm sorry, King Boo. You're just gonna have to go and haunt some other game reviewer today. <sighs> some booze, I'm telling you. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about all the interruptions. Uh, thank you again very much for sticking around, and I hope you'll stay around for more content on the channel very soon. This has been Will. <laughs>